What's up, everyone, and welcome down to another episode of Zetro's Toxic Vault. Alongside myself, I have my partner in crime in the tribute band that I do. I do an AC tri- ACDC tribute band. Mr. Dave Chapman, what's up? Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Good to have you in. A lot of you guys have uh, chimed in on the comments about, you know, what about your ACDC band, and I wanted to do an episode. Uh, we kind of live all kind of far away from each other, so... When we have gigs is really the only time we see each other. We do have some shows coming up, yep. and so um, we're going to be doing some rehearsals. But I wanted to get him into the vault to talk about this because a lot of you people, we haven't really went out of Northern California really with the band, have we? No, no, Bay Area yeah, mostly. So if you're a Bay Area guy, you kind of get this. and We've been doing it for what? 10 years now, I think. I think we started in 2010, so was going, it ten, nine, yeah, nine? nine? I thought it was nine. I really did. Anyway, so we've been doing it for about 10 years. And basically, um, I've always kind of modeled my voice after Bon Scott. Uh, but, you know, Udo, Lemmy, Wendy O, kind of, you know, kind of, ah, you know, kind of <laughs> that growl. Especially Bon would probably be the most, uh, uh, f- uh, you know, front runner on that one. But um, uh, I wanted, I've always had people say, man, you should probably put together some type of ACDC tribute band. So we were at a party with uh, John Allen at John Allen's house, our first drummer. Mm -hmm. uh, And we'll talk about that. And I'm at a party with John Allen and I'm there with Walter Morgan, my partner in crime here on the show, Walter. Our ace in the, uh, ace in the uh, whole uh, background vocalist. Yeah. For, for, for time to, we had to, it was that. Anyway, we'll talk about those background vocals, by the way, because we love to rip on Walter on the show, and that's exactly what that'll be. It's a good thing he has thick skin. But we were listening to their Tempo of the Damned, and, and uh, on the end, there's uh, Dirty Deeds. Exodus does a cover of Dirty Deeds, and I'm like, man, you need to do this. So, they, so they're like, well, who are we going to get? And I'm all, well, I, you know, I want it to look kind of, uh, you know, kind of like not odd, but, you know, not different. But so I want a girl in the band like, oh, we'll get Elena Rapetto. She could play bass. And I go, I knew she would do it, too, because she was a big Exodus fan. And Elena's a great player. She was really, really good player. Love Elena. And then uh, and then I'm like, and then Johnny will play drums. And I go, well, who are we going to get on guitar? And like, I don't know. Well, what are we gonna do about that? Well, we'll get uh, uh, we'll get somebody to um, we'll put in Blabbermouth. Was that what it was, Dave? It was, was Blabbermouth. Blabbermouth went out Zetro's doing a, a, a tribute band or something like that, and there was three guys that inquired about that, and uh, two of the guys were I get we checked them out. But everybody had a video; they were pretty good, and we saw his band, him, and he was like. You'll never get a better Angus or something like that. I'm Aww. your guy, something like that. And so we actually, when we, you were the first that was going to be on the audition. And when we went to audition you, you nailed it so hard that we were like, we're not even talking to the other two guys. <laughs> this guy's it. So um, that was in uh, John Allen's little Remember that little closet little sized, and then and then I was starting Hatred at that time, right? And we had Drew. and we had Drew on guitar for just a minute, just like he was in Hatred, just a really short minute. But that's kind of how the base of that started. Um, yeah, so I answer the ad in uh, Blappermouth. I uh, I email Walter and I say, hey, I think I'm your guy. You know, I think I, I can do it. I've been doing it with my band here in SAC for a few years. I think I got the chops. And uh, so Walter contacted me and said, hey, we're going to have a first rehearsal. And I was going, is this a tryout? And he's going, no, I think you got it. And I was like, well, okay, I like that tryout. So I'm trying not to be a fanboy because obviously I've listened to Zetro and Exodus and and you know the Bay Area thrash since the uh, John. since the '80s and you know Sadus and stuff like that. So I'm you know trying to maintain my composure. So I drive all the way into Antioch. Who's I have that? no idea where I'm going. I go to uh, Walter Morgan's house, you know, and he's got this big palatial house out there. And I knock on the door, and Walter opens the door and goes, "Huh, you look like him." I'm like, "All right, nice to meet you." <laughs> but whose house was? It well, that yeah. Really so lived in? I come in, and I mean, he's got his cat there. I'm this petting the, the cat, capa. and I'm like looking around, and I'm going, oh, that, "Walter, this is a nice place, you know." And I'm seeing pictures on the wall, and I'm going, "Who's that?" And he's going, "Oh, that's Tiff." I go, "Okay," and he goes, "Hey, man, you want to see my collection?" You know. So we go up to his room. I go, "Well, this is your room." I go, 
and he goes, yeah. And I go, well, who, how, whose house is this? And he goes, oh, this is Chuck Billy's house. And I'm like, again, trying to uh, maintain composure. No way. I'm in Chuck Billy. I'm in the Chief's house. Right. So, wow. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, are we, are we rehearsing here? And he goes, no, we're going to go to John's house. And so I'm like thinking, this is all right, man. I, I've stepped up my game come up to a John Allen's house and we're playing in the garage. It took me back to like 1984, <laughs> playing with my friends in the garage with the garage door open. He had a cool little studio set up in there. For yeah, him. it was bad. It was, it was all drums. Where him and uh, Sadus practice because Steve and Darren lived right mm-hmm. around there. Yeah, I but, think Steve uh, lived right next door to him. Yeah, right across the street. Exactly. And then uh, uh, Darren lived right around there too. So yeah, we... Uh, I mean, first in, and, and the movement, like Angus, he starts, in rehearsal, he's kicking it, I'm looking at this guy. So, I remember we, we kind of, we, we were playing, and then we got a gig, was it Pine Street was the Pine first Street, gig? Pine Street, Livermore. And we played Pine Street and Livermore, the first fucking gig, and um, uh, uh, I figure, you know... You know, I'm in Exodus. I'm my. I'm probably the draw of it. You know what I mean? The, the. You know, the curiosity of Zetro, always singing. You know, Exodus. Now we're gonna see him sing a. You're still the draw, man. You know what I mean? No way, no way. <laughs> and I see, I see, Dave comes on stage with these horns and his suit, and just makes his way up. And I was like, like almost like whoa, pushed it. Well, and he did his total ang- Angus thing that you do, just like Angus. And I was like, wow. That's how this should be. He is the he is ACDC, and Bon is a great compliment to him as right. well. But even though, you know, what I do musically, other than that, it's a little bit more formidable. But to me, I think that you know, to be honest with you, the band is very solid because you uh, play the part very very well. I think we've done well over the years because we've gone through many. Many members in Many ten members. years. There are there's been a few in the ACDC camp, you know. Right, all yeah. family, all still family. Yeah, we're all cool with it. It's all good, you know. There's no uh, no hard feelings. It's just uh, you know, there's you know me. It's uh, it's it's hard. It's hard to ride. <laughs> it's hard to ride the rail, especially with him, <laughs> Doctor Hook. I call him. He's Doctor Hook. Yeah, he would uh, he would always uh, call me. To say, hey, you're gonna have to give some bad news. I became the Grim Reaper for some Dr. reason. Hook. After- Dr. Hook. Dr. Hook calls you. You're getting a call from Dave going, hey, you got a minute? Yeah, we're you gonna know move on. What's going on? <laughs> but uh, uh, nothing in bad. I mean, you know, just uh, we're, we're diff- diff- different, different, uh, 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 things on different levels for that matter. But I think right now we're very solid. Very solid. Very solid. So, um, Dave, you grew up in the Sacramento area. Sacramento, and born you're and like bred. my age. You know, you're in that age bracket. So, um, young. What was your first? Uh, of course, twenty nine. <laughs> what was your first attraction to Angus and ACDC? And what was the first? Was it was it before uh, Back in Black, or was it around it, that time? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm the. Uh, I have four older brothers. I'm the runt of the litter of five boys. So, uh, yeah, I was born in '66. So I had no. Uh, no excuse but to be indoctrinated into rock and roll. So uh, Montrose, the first Montrose album in sure. 74 was really, I mean, that uh, Space Station oh, number sure. five. Yeah, right. And then, uh, you know, uh, uh, I didn't really find my foothold in music until I discovered Kiss, and that was, Kiss was my band. Yeah, I know you're a big Kiss fan. I know big that. Big Kiss fan. And then, of course, my brothers would bring home, you know, Frank Zappa, and they'd bring, and Rush was, was big back then. And ACDC, obviously, uh, the first uh, album I heard from them was If You Want Blood, You Got It. The first full album. I had it on eight track actually, and uh, that's what I you know started. It was you know you hear it ACDC's easy, so that's what I first started learning my chops off. You know old Kiss that that particular album if you want blood, and then uh, when Highway to Hell came out, that was you know that album right there just changed the landscape. You know, well I think for everybody, but I mean like I'm with you. I listened to first time I heard ACDC was Let There Be Rock, mm-hmm. but the when i the full indoctrine was if you want blood for me right you know, that's an, right I exactly really, i'd heard songs here I, and there I, but exactly and i really kind of that's when i really soaked that record where i knew it top to bottom right you know and and, and good to hear you just everything yeah. you said and everything on there and that was in now being a huge kiss fan 
did you ever do a kiss tribute? Was that ever in the? No. Unfortunately, <clears throat> I'm short, <laughs> so I have. Well, that... but Paul wears. I think he's short too, and he would just wears big tall shoes, right? Uh, yeah, no, they're all like six foot tall, and I was never gonna pull off six foot tall. You know, I'm five you foot. Get Bob bigger shoes. Yeah, no, nah, wasn't gonna happen. So, uh, uh, you know, I learned how to play Ace Frehley riffs, but you know, it didn't really. It, to be in a tribute band, you have to kind of be true to the. Uh, uh, to the uh, source material right and so i see i don't want to be uh, detract from many bands but i see their angus and their angus is like six foot tall and it just doesn't look right so i have that or going. 500 pounds well <laughs> or something i know I, I i've seen that many times where i've like oh this is the focal point of this band and they're really not getting the yeah focal all that well you yeah. know what i mean I, you know so. I, I don't say anything disparaging if you're on stage you know more power to you but when i want to see a tribute band i want to see something that's true i don't go see a kiss tribute band and, and the guys show up and no makeup yet there has to be a certain level of uh yeah well uh, that, that's been you know it's funny because um I, I would have to say tribute bands are kind of in the early stages still kind of i mean 15 years ago I, oh you guys are an acdc cover band oh you know so it's like <laughs> oh no it's tribute and do you know that i really didn't get you, you, there's a part in that uh that movie rock star where yeah. he's like we're not a, we're not a cover we're band we're, we're a, a tribute, tribute band. band and and that's that uh, boy I, <laughs> and it's like i'm it's the guy who so, calls that fine line and i was like <laughs> and I, when i saw the movie i was like cover band tribute band whatever difference does it make and now I got, i've done this for 10 years and i'm like you know we're a, a tribute band we emulate what they fucking correct. do the same energy the, the same, same exactly, dynamic the yeah. same stage performance the same look the same per, you know i try to you know um, day plays very much in the pocket and honestly for you guys you know go to youtube and just push in acdz z is in zetro hmm. and you will uh you will uh find tons of stuff of yeah, us right. online if you're you know i know that a lot of people around the world are very much aware of us and i get shit all the time come over and play a festival <laughs> you know i'm ready but <laughs> we're gonna make that work bags are packed let's go we're trying to so um when you were growing up, um, how old were you when you started actually playing guitar? You know, I plunked around on it. We had a little <coughs> old acoustic guitar in the house, plunked around on it, just trying to impress my brothers. Uh -huh. Really, you know, learning a little riff and then, uh, you know, letting them hear it. And they'd be go, oh, look at little Dave. All right. So that was fine. It wasn't <laughs> until the 80s. From 80 to 84, I mean, what a great time for, yeah, very much for so. metal and hard rock. Well, I mean, that was... It, was... it was, an, again, a new, fresh... There was tons of flowers blooming. Oh my constantly God! So with many albums. I mean, the, the I mean you, Black yeah, Sabbath with uh, Heaven and Hell. Oh, well, that plus I mean, and all the Black. new wave of British heavy metal right. stuff on there. Then, then, and... then you got Kill 'Em All and Metallica, and, right? Was... And, and and Bonded by Blood on the other side. Exactly. You know what I mean? There's, there's so things going on. You know, eighty four when all these... Show No Mercy, how fucking Slayer. It's like you know, that, I mean, there's like in Saxon started, stuff. Didn't I? You know, <laughs> go, go for it. Now, um, so it was about in the. Uh, I was in high school school and me and my uh, buddies were plinking around learning riffs and you know and we'd learn a uh, green man alishi and then we'd play it and one of my right, friends so. one of my buddies would have a uh, uh, uh drum set and we'd sit there and dink around uh, uh tnt was another one and then when it came to the guitar solos we were all kind of not really that proficient yet to, to be able to try that so we would just make noise and after a while around 84 85 86 the noise started to make a little sense you know i've never had a lesson and sometimes it shows when i play but <laughs> i don't think so necessarily and i think that um when you play the leads and to me um angus's leads are very signature you know what i mean right so you have to play um them in the in the in the succession that he plays them right anybody can play in the key obviously but uh, playing in those actual notes you know is what people listen to as far as they listen to the whole record they they can mouth the lead or right. in their head wee, 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 you know they know where the lead is if you do that because their music is so signatory on every level right. vocally lyrically um um, um the leads you know, Malcolm ah, in the back, you know what I mean? His <laughs> rhythm is just great. Every piece of it works so well, you know? Yeah, I find uh, 
Angus has a, a certain pattern, especially in the older, the, the 70s stuff. He has a pattern with his guitar playing. He'll start low, go mid, and then he'll hit a high note. So there's a bit of pattern. There's a, I won't say sameness, but there's a, a consistency with his playing in the early stuff. His latter stuff in the 80s and 90s, uh, he, he kind of went away from that. He's more... I don't know. It's it's a little. It's not as energetic as it used to be. The '70s, his material and solos in the '70s were just crazy. Uh, now I, he's uh, he's under a little more control in the, in the '80s and '90s and the and the current stuff. I prefer the older stuff, just with his playing because it's just it's a punch in the mouth. Well, that's what we play. See, and and in the tribute band that we play in, it's only the Bon Scott era, so we only play the songs from um, from High Voltage and. Uh, yeah, and, let uh, there be rock. Let power there be rock. Age. Power age. Seventy four. Jailbreak. Dirty deeds. Dunder cheap. And uh, highway, to hell. highway to hell. Right. So basically, that's where we said it. To me, that was the the raw ACDC. Right. The raw. Pen. And I have nothing wrong with any of the rest of the history of the band. There are songs that I love through them, but nothing hits me hard like every song that they did from that era and i mean every song it's strange whenever you talk to any of the fans that come to the shows the friends the family they uh and you and they they, they'll ask me what do you prefer bon scott or brian johnson and i go well obviously bon scott and it's probably like a 95 to 5 percent ratio of people that prefer bon scott material but the caveat is then you bring in the album Back in Black into the discussion. That's it, too. And that's an all-time classic. That, yeah, that stands on its own. Every song is a hit. Yeah, every the whole album from start song. to finish. So yeah, yeah. it's not a great ACDC yeah. album. It's a great all-time album. So that one kind of stands alone. So, I mean, well, they, they love the, Bon Scott, the last but they time like we, that one, too. Remember the last time we played The Fox? That uh, chick came up to the front, and she was going, play You Shook Me All Night Long, and I'm like, <laughs> we don't do that era ACDC and she looked at me like I'm fucking what, what do you mean that era ACDC there's a like, different era there's another what do you mean what with what, what, ACDC it's like no no it's like the movie Step Brothers we're an 80s Billy Joel tribute oh that's the great, yeah that's the greatest one <laughs> play Uptown Girl, play Uptown Girl. <laughs> or Piano Man you play Piano we're 80s it is, yeah that's great that's funny that yeah. is funny so going back you know uh, getting an opportunity to play with you because obviously a, a buddy of mine in the 80s was the heavy metal guy I was more into like Judas Priest and Maiden I hadn't really gotten into the thrash metal but uh uh Fabulous disaster! You guys did a cover of Overdose that was yeah. just incredible. Yeah, I mean it was it, that. That's kind of what that was the. Uh, uh, I mean, the, well, the gateway just... music drug that kind of okay. I'll listen to this album a little more. Got me into EXO, and then of course you know some of the Anthrax and the Metallica. About eighty five, eighty six, I, I got on the uh, the the thrash scene. Back then, I was you know in the. 80s, it was more Scorpions and Maiden and Kiss and, and the, the radio-friendly bands. But I was I was brought up on Saxon and Motorhead right. and, and Plasmatics and and, and, mm -hmm. and and Kiss and all that stuff, too. I went back and forth with it. Anything that had a raw or edge to it, I was right. uh, very much into. You used to drive me crazy because when I was getting my musical identity and my musical preference, it was, you know, Kiss and ACDC and Rush, and the, they were guitar-driven, but... I kept reading like Rolling Stone magazine and stuff like that, and they're talking about the future of rock and roll, and it was like Bruce Springsteen or Boz Skag, and I I listened to these and I go, this isn't this isn't rock, you know, this is this this isn't Look resonating what it is with now. me. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's uh, a Maroon Five, and it's like yeah uh, yeah, there's no new bands. I mean, there's who's out there? The guys that sound like Led Zeppelin. Uh, yeah, Greta yeah, Van Fleet. Yeah, they you know, there's nothing that was that's heavy that grabs you that right. goes, Wow, this is this is gonna have hold some test. And, and the time, biggest you know? uh the biggest uh, advertisement you hear for Greta Van Fleet is they sound like Led Zeppelin. Well right. if I wanna hear Led, Led Zeppelin, Zeppelin, I'll just go listen to Led Zeppelin. I agree. Hey, I you agree. know, more power to exactly. them. I've heard I mean, enough I mean, of them, they're good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not I don't I don't ever say anything bad mm -hmm. about a musician, but I feel the same way thing with with you if I want my Led Zeppelin, I'll go get my Led Zeppelin. Yeah, know. it's the same way with ACDC. There was a band called The Answer. There was Jet, and everybody was like, oh, they sound just like ACDC. And, you know, even the, the Cult album, what was that, Electric? Yeah. I mean, definite ACDC vibe. But, again, I'll just go to the original. You know, yeah, I'll just listen to ACDC. Now, do you remember your first gig? And, and, <laughs> um, and, and did you ever 
play like in your own band, like you know, with the orig- with original songs and what kind of music? If you did, what kind of music did you play? Uh, my first gig was at uh, North Highlands, where I grew up at the community center, and uh, a buddy of mine was uh, he rented the place out and got security, and I was. I can't even remember what year it was, but I was the lead singer and rhythm guitar player. And uh, could you play I, lead at that time? I I was not good. What year was this? <laughs> I'm gonna say only honesty here in the vault. I'm gonna say eighty four, eighty five. Uh huh. So I, you know, and we had uh, uh, we had uh, another guy named Craig who uh, who played guitar and he was really good. And then we had another guy named Craig who played bass and he was a goofball. And uh, I only sang by virtue. Nobody else could uh, would wanted to sing. We only had you know this small PA system with the one mic. So, and we were doing songs that were so far outside of my scope. We were doing Aces High by uh, by Iron, Iron Maiden. Maiden, and I'm got I got to sing this. And uh, we're doing uh, um, what's the Sabbath song? Neon Nights. We're doing so, and we're doing some Dio, and we're just and so high uh, register songs. High vocally. register, songs, and I've got no yeah. vocal acumen whatsoever. Yeah, if you're so. coming in, those are ones that are tough. Yeah, so we had like twelve songs on our set list, right? And uh, we're about six songs in, and I'm I can barely talk, so I'm just screaming. I've got no discipline. I've got no stamina. No nothing. I don't got what it takes. How to many sing. people at this gig? Packed three hundred. No, way. <laughs> it was First huge. Three hundo, baby. Uh, and you know, I, I had bought a new pair of boots, so I'm on the front of the stage, you know, playing guitar, and there's kids lined up, and they're, you know, they're grabbing my boots, and it was my first gig, and I'm going, this is what I want to do. And then somebody took a Miller beer and threw it up on stage and smashed the, uh, the PA system, hit on the PA, PA's out, gig over, gig over, and we only had like two more songs to go, so it was a perfect ending. Oh, we want to continue, but. We can't. And it was the guitar player, Craig. It was his PA system, so he was hot. He was pissed. So, yeah. 